Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I have been so busy here. Usually I have November to Dece and December to take time to, you know, uh, get everything all set up for spring and summer, uh, you know, all the work I get in the spring and summer. But, and, oh, oh, you know, some time to relax. But I've been just so jam-packed. So, uh, I had to put the 6 meter amp aside for a little bit. So, the transformer, the custom transformer for this thing is finally on the way. So, uh, I'm just getting the RF deck completed. So, today I cut the shafts for the air variable capacitors for the input circuit and attach knobs. And then cut some stainless shafts for the, the plate and load vacuum variable capacitors and install two knobs still need to clean the front panel off but uh you know that's basically all set so uh tomorrow i'm going to back feed the output network with the proper resin load resistor which is a 1k resistor between the anode and ground and i'll tune the the uh pi coil first and also set the feed through SDBR. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, the cap I put in, I don't leave it in line all the time. You know, when the amp's keyed, it's taken out of the circuit. It's just in line through when it's uh, when it's unkeyed. So when the amplifier's not in line. Well, when it's connected in line with the jumpers, but not actually keyed. So when it's unkeyed, uh, it corrects the, the uh, feed through SDBR. Okay, so I'll show you the front panel, go sideways. You got the Pi input network adjustments right here. And you got the LPi output network adjustments right here. With the plate current meter right here and grid current meter right here. One switch changes the static plate current, shorts out some diodes that are you know inside for the diode string for the biasing. And then the other one's a standby operate switch. I'll show you everything in the bottom here. You know, this already had a plastic shaft coming off of it, but I wanted them to match. And I used this, the uh, isolation couplers. Didn't need to, but I have like a whole ton of these. So they weren't needed. Could have used solid ones, but you know, I have, like I said, I have tons of them. They're all brand new. So you get the bias diodes here. You got the circuit to speed up the relays. You got the opto isolator package here that uh, protects the key line on the transceiver, which isolates the the key line on the you know the relay inside the transceiver from the relays in here. So basically, the radio keys this, and this keys all the relays. So you got the supercon connectors for the filament. Filament choke, tube socket, pie network for the input. You got the vacuum relay for the bias switching, so it's super fast. Got the cutoff resistor right there. Got the input vacuum relay there. Use Teflon coax coming from the input connector over to the relay and then over to the output relays. So, um, the uh, cathode return is fused, so is the grid. Um, so back here, also I have two line fuses. You have the connection points to check the filament voltage, and then the chokes and a dropping resistor, so if these were ever shorted together, you won't have the full potential of the filament transformer. <laughs> You know, at whatever shorting the two terminals, if one were shorted to ground, it'll just uh, bias the tube on. So, all Teflon wire down there. So, we've got the L coil, the Pi coil, it's an L Pi safety choke, output vacuum variable capacitor on the load side, and then the a vacuum variable capacitor on the plate side. Got the plate choke with the bypass caps. The B positive wire has not been installed. That's SFT 600 Teflon coax grounded both sides. 
I have two RJ2B vacuum relays for the output switching and braided strap between, you know, they're connected in parallel on each side with braided strap to take the stress off of the terminals on the relays. Very thick wall Teflon chimney. Uh, I drilled and tapped it with studs coming out to secure it to the floor with a thin layer of silicone. This is getting a perforated cover, similar to the Henry radio amplifiers, like the, the RF generators. Thick, and uh, I didn't opt with the chimney on the top. That's not needed in a situation like this. Uh, they did that with amplifiers with roller inductors to give the, the inductors cooling. The problem is I wouldn't be able to work on it with the cover off and it's just not needed so I'll have one cover with you know it's all perforated so plenty of airflow uh, they also do that you know in some amplifiers that aren't using the proper blower so they're they're compensating uh, you know if they're using a blower that doesn't have the proper back pressure rating sorry the sniffles it will um, relieve some of that back pressure by having less restriction as the uh, you know having a chimney like this you have the restriction of the socket and then the the fins of the tube so you end up with you know per spec sheet you need I'll be right back I have to restart I'm gonna run out of time be right back sorry about that I had to delete some footage on my card here on the camera so yeah every tube has a CFM and pressure spec for a certain intake temp uh, depending on if you're uh, pushing the air through the base or pulling it from the top. So the blower in this thing it see, exceeds the specs and uh, no, none of the components in here will come close to their maximum operating temp. Another reason why in broadcast amps they'll use a, they usually use a chimney um, around the tube to the floor, but they'll use one on the top of the tube also going out the cabinet. That's to keep uh, contaminants, even though they'll usually use a filter, but sometimes they won't. Uh, keeps the contaminants out of the RF deck because they're mainly just, you know, blasting the air right through the tube and right out the amp. So, um, now that's another thing to think of. So, uh, you have the anode B positive connection. Uh, Let's see, this will be, after this is trimmed and this is trimmed, these will both be soldered to this copper uh, piece I cut right here. And uh, I added the right angle aluminum, the base, to give a better electrical connection between, you know, path between the plate tune vacuum variable and the tube grids. I have four 200 puff 15 kV doorknob caps in parallel. I will manipulate this a little bit. Someone pointed that out before, but I already planned on. You know, I'll manipulate this to bring it away. It'll be fine anyway, but uh, I'm going to adjust this one first, and then I'll adjust that one. So far away from ground, so it's not adding you know any more capacitance to the plate tune air uh, vacuum variable capacitor. So it has a 716 DIN connector for the output. Turn around carefully on the towel. Get a better view of everything. I'll show you the 716 thin. Okay, always leave that on there to protect the threads. So it's the ground stud. I'll have I'm all about safety. So it has reverse connected diodes between the B negative in the chassis, in the RF deck, and in the power supply section, which I'm getting ready to make. This twist lock plug also has a ground. This is the cathode return. The B negative goes through one of these connections, the other two are 240. So I'll have a braided strap going from to bond this cabinet to the bottom cabinet. Same over here. These are the filament test points. Uh, the, the volt, you know, the uh, Fluke meter leads will slip right in and hold in place. They'll hold, you know, they're the exact diameter for them to stay in place when you stick them in. Here's the female RCA jack to key it. The input SO239, all of the fuse holders. 
And the B negative will be within a braided ground strap. I've done this uh, a lot of times in the past to be in material like this right here. See this, down the center. And it will go through a grommet and this will have a pigtail on it with a, a ring terminal and that'll connect to ground on the inside, give it strain relief, plus it'll protect the high voltage cable. So it's gonna be hardwired on this side. It'll go right to the, uh, it'll go to a standoff and then from the standoff inside, ceramic standoff, it'll go to the base of the plate choke. And then it'll be set up on the other side so the person has to take the cover off and insert it. So I didn't wanna use any sort of high voltage connector. It's just, this is the most dangerous part and uh, you know, if someone has kids or animals or whatever, I didn't want anyone to touch it. So, so uh, it's basically, you know, take the cover off, connect it, and then that's it. You won't have to do it again until he moves it or you know, if he sells it or something. So, so uh, that's about it. Tomorrow I will show the tuning of the output network and the tuning of the feed through. So I'm very, I, I just love Teflon wire. I have tons of it, okay? It's tons. Rolls and rolls and rolls. That's all I use. I love it. So use clamps. I have bags and bags of these clamps. And uh, so nice view of everything. I shielded the wire that goes up to the meters. And I have 0.01 caps across each meter. Sorry, once again, sniffles. I cut these right angle brackets out of aluminum, angle aluminum. Use grade eight bolts, they're torqued really tight. And uh, proper filament choke. So, I also grounded the back side of each of these air variable capacitors. I just kept the cap nuts, the steel ones. There was no point in going with brass, so I was able to get these really tight. Plus, I w there wasn't enough thread to get a washer and then a split washer um, behind this one. So I just went with the steel ones. The, the, the uh, surface is up against the other nut, so that's good. It's good to go. I have the flyback diodes across each relay. The output relays have one since uh, there are two relays in parallel, so I only needed one across one of them, uh, one here, one there, and uh, that's about it. That resistor right there is between the cathode return and ground. There will be one down near the filament transformer. Also, that's this, this, you know, the center tap. So, if the uh, wire going down to the power supply were disconnected it wouldn't float. It would always have a path back to ground. So that's about it. Stay tuned. You'll get to see some, some cool stuff tomorrow. And like I said, the, the blower will be housed in the bottom cabinet, which is in this box. It's 22 square. And there'll be a hole with neoprene material on the bottom cover so it'll give it a nice seal it'll be the size of this give a nice seal this is a flat you know solid cover with the rectangular hole the size of the the blower outlet which is right there okay so thanks for watching ampreparaguy.com catch you later hey i made a few mistakes i just wanted to correct them really quick so the wire going in the braided material is not the B negative. It's actually the B positive. I get up really early and I am tired already. I'm working on this later in the day. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, blowers have a pressure rating. It's not a, a back pressure rating. It's a pressure rating. Okay. And the two specs for a tube, a lot of tubes, is base to anode and then anode to base. So it's not if you're pulling the air, it's if you're either pushing air up through the fins or from the top down, okay? So those are the three things I caught. I always check, I figured I'd put it in video instead of putting in the, it in the description. Okay, so 
Thanks for watching, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. Lots of stuff to do here, <laughs> but got to get this done. Okay, see you soon.